For the last month, I've ran my entire house and garage on these three GrowWatt brand inverters behind me. They total 15 kilowatts worth of inverting power, and it's been working great for all the details on efficiency and how well they've been performing, as well as some of the hiccups along the way. Stick around. Hi, I'm David. Welcome to my channel where I like to DIY renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. In some previous videos, I went through a lot of details on these GrowWatt brand inverters. Each inverter is a five kilowatt inverter with a solar MPPT charger built in that can take up to a 6,000 watt solar array. I have three of them, each connected to its own solar array outside. And then over here on the left, we have a big battery box. And this has about 30 kilowatt hours worth of lithium iron phosphate batteries in it. This system has been powering my entire house for the last month. Now these inverters each output 230 volts. And then we parallel them. So we're still at 230 volts, 230 volts, but we're just increasing our total capacity. So five kilowatts, 10 kilowatts and 15 kilowatts, all feeding together into this one load center. Now the power is currently on, so I'm not gonna stick my fingers in there, but I have it open because I have these CT clamps on each leg, and that's for these two separate meters, and then I have one meter down here, which is reading the total power going in. Now all of this gives me 230 volts, but that's only half the story. This is an auto transformer. Now, I live in uh, United States, North America. We have split phase power. So 230 volts is coming in. And then this auto transformer can split that in half, giving me a, a middle neutral, which then gives me 120 volts and 120 volts legs. And that's what is kind of typical here in the United States. So that's what I'm using this auto transformer for. And down here, I have a little temperature sensor on this so that I can just kind of every single time I walk past this area, I'm, I'm checking it uh, as far as how hot this thing is getting. So it has all been working really well. Now I do want to point out that if you decide to do something similar in your own home, uh, try a different setup with the auto transformer. I've had several commenters, uh, rightfully so, pointing out that if this circuit breaker ever trips that feeds the auto transformer, we would create an imbalance on the two legs in the house and that might affect some sensitive electronics. You don't want to burn anything out. You don't want to cause more headaches for yourself. So it'd be better to set this up in a different way. I am working on some stuff that hopefully I'll get to in the future. Uh, but having all of these meters as well as the shunt on the battery bank, I've been able to check electricity going in, uh, coming from the solar array. I've been able to check the efficiency of the auto transform, all of this. So uh, I'm gonna run through a few of the numbers. First off, when you first turn these inverters on, like right now, they're on, but they're not uh, powering anything. I actually switched us to the grid just so that I could record this video so you don't have the loud fan noise. Uh, right now they're quiet uh, because they're not doing a lot of inverting, but when they're doing a lot of work, those fans kick on and they can get pretty loud. Uh, they do have different speeds, I guess, depending on how much work the inverters are doing. And if it, you'll notice if you're pulling a lot of load, the fans kick up higher and higher in speed and it gets loud out here. So the inverters themselves draw about 70 watts in idle. So we have about 210 watts being drawn from the battery almost all the time. So all night long, you're drawing 210 watts just to power up the system. Now my house and garage, I consume about 300 watts uh, all the time, just kind of a, as a base load. Now that's gonna be things like cell phone chargers always plugged in, uh, laptops plugged in, modem, router, uh, the little clock on your microwave. All those things are phantom loads. Now add it all up, my house is about 300 watts baseline. So that's if you don't have any heating or cooling running, it's just this baseline all the time. Now when that's going, uh, these don't look very efficient because you have a 210 watt uh, idle load plus a 300 watt uh, load on the house. Uh, so it doesn't look very efficient. 
Now that's true with all inverters across the board. However, some inverters are more efficient uh, down at that lower end, such as these SMA inverters over here. Uh, but those SMA inverters are far more expensive than these Grow Up brand inverters. So you have to kind of weigh the pros and cons. If you plan on always having a really low load, uh, you might not want to set up something this big. In fact, for my own personal setup, I've noticed that I've never gone over 10 kilowatts load in the house. So I'm gonna take down one of these inverters and use it for a different project. That's gonna leave me with two inverters to power the house. That will make the overall system more efficient, which means that the battery will last longer. Now, once you start putting a little bit of a load on the inverters, they get more efficient. Now, these are five kilowatt inverters, and once you hit about one kilowatt load or about a 20% load on the inverter, uh, up through about two kilowatts, you're, you're kind of in that sweet spot, and you're getting about 93% efficiency at inverting the battery power to your alternating current power. Now, 93% efficiency is pretty good, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with these at about that load. And even when you get really high and you're loading these up close to their max, uh, over 90% load on these things, they're, they're still in the mid 80s for efficiency. So it's not a terrible inverter. You just have to keep in mind that uh, I personally wouldn't want these if you're just kind of idling them all the time. Now, one of the positives, I never had these actually get hot. I've put my hand here several times, even when I've been trying to load them down, like with the water heater and oven inside the house running. And the outside of the case never gets hot. The fans do a good job keeping everything cool, but the fans do run, they do kick up in speed. So you wanna keep that in mind. If we go over and look at the auto transformer, uh, if I just put that right there, it's warm at 55 degrees Celsius. So that's warm, but not bad. I mean, I can still put my hand on the aluminum. Now let me talk a little bit about the solar MPPT chargers. There are solar charge controllers built into each inverter. Now it's a separate chip inside here, uh, but it's all part of one package that makes it really easy. Now when the solar is out and the battery is full, the inverters run on the solar just by themselves. They don't actually pull from the battery. So the typical cycle that I, I've been running is the batteries drop overnight. They lower in state of charge. I'm consuming the power. The sun comes out in the morning. These things start uh, taking that solar PV and recharging the battery. I'm typically full by about noon. Now that's because I have a total of 12 kilowatts worth of solar array outside. So by noon I hit full. The state of charge is up there. And then these things back off, uh, which is what I programmed them for. They do not float up at 56 volts. These will charge the battery to 56 volts. Once they hit that, they back off uh, and they go down and the battery then will settle down to about 53 and a half volts. And it knows that. And it is only using power from the PV array at that point. It's not consuming any power from the battery. Once the solar goes away, and these things need more power, they'll start pulling it from the battery. Now what that means is that all afternoon, the battery's just sitting there at full, 100% state of charge. It's ready to go for night. These things are only consuming the power from the PV. So that's really great because we're not doing uh, kind of micro cycling. So we're not charging the battery and then draining it down a little bit and then charging it back up, draining it down a little bit, charging it back up you can get that kind of micro cycling with different systems. And these do a really good job at just pulling the power in from the PV. And they are efficient at charging the battery and running on the PV directly. So I was pretty happy with that. Now there's another interesting thing about these solar MPPT chargers. In the manual, they say maximum 18 amps going in. Now my solar panels outside, uh, I think they have about a 9.3 amp at MP or maximum power point. So when I have two solar panel strings in parallel, they add the amperage. That would be 18.6 or 18.7. I think there's a decimal place in there somewhere. But the point is that we're a little bit over 18 amps. Now these things never blew up, never had a problem with that. They maxed out at 18 amps, which is what they can take. 
And all they did is they shifted the maximum power point to the maximum these allow. So yeah, there's a tiny, tiny percentage of efficiency lost there, but remember they're, they're charging the battery by noon anyway, so losing just a tiny bit of efficiency is okay. I'm gonna put up a curve here of my exact solar panels and the point that these things would shift the maximum power point along that curve. And you can see that we're just not losing that much power per panel. But that is a good thing about these inverters. The point here is that the solar charge controllers built in did their job. I was a little worried up front that my solar panels wouldn't cooperate well with these charge controllers uh, because I'd be just a little over that 18 amps, but luckily these did their job. They shifted that maximum power point just a little bit, kept us at the 18 amp line and nothing blew up and they worked as advertised. They did their job. Would I buy these again knowing what I know now? Uh, the answer is uh, yes. If budget is really, really tight and you need the cheapest upfront thing that just works, that you don't have to worry about it being a bad product, then uh, these are a good way to go. Personally, I would have just gone with two instead of getting three up front. Uh, you know, I was kind of worried about these because they're cheap. I, I was worried that uh, I was going to overload them or maybe I wasn't going to hit that 5,000 watt mark or whatever. I was going to overheat them or something. And I figured I would need the three to compensate but that never occurred. Uh, I'll keep running the house and garage on two inverters instead of three. I'll report back again in the future. And the third one, I'm gonna give it to my friend. Now my friend has an off grid property. So there's no grid power available and he has a little tiny house on it. Now this is down in Florida and he lives down there for half the year and then goes up to Maine for the other half of the year. Now down there in Florida, he's got his tiny house, he's got a well, he's got a composting toilet. Uh, so what he uses the power for is as well, mostly. So he has a generator and he wheels it out. He fires it up uh, once or twice a day. He does all of the, his water related stuff during that period of time, and then he'll shut it off. So this means that he doesn't have air conditioning. Uh, and he, uh, that's like his biggest thing is that he really wants to add air conditioning because even though he's down there in the winter months, it's still Florida. It gets hot and humid and he'd love to run air conditioning down there, but he doesn't want to run his generator all day long, all night long. I mean, that first off, that would get really expensive with gas, but second, he just doesn't uh, want the noise and fumes and everything else. So he's been asking me for a while now about how to go off grid with an inverter setup. Uh, if you decide to purchase any of this stuff that you see in the video, I will leave links in the description below. That goes to Signature Solar. I have a discount coupon code available with them, which is David Paws. That should get you a discount and it tracks the affiliate program, which helps out the channel. So thank you if you decide to use that coupon code. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.